This course on the book of Job is one that does cover many of the traditional questions that you find in historical introduction to the book. But I think what would be distinctive about it would be the uh, discussion of the history of interpretation of Job, uh, moving through the early church, uh, starting with Gregory and, and moving through some medieval figures like Maimonides and, and uh, discussing Calvin and Aquinas and Bart, and then some modern readings uh, from uh, the era of our own time. And I would say, uh, after we do that in the course, we uh, also have a discussion of what I consider to be key exegetical passages in the book, uh, mainly found in Job 9, Job 16, 19, and uh, chapters 32 and 33. Uh, and, and then in addition to that, I also believe, I'm a big believer in covering the entire book. Uh, so uh, I also discuss the main sections of Job, the prologue in 1 through 2, the dialogues in 3 through 31, uh, then what are called uh, the Elihu speeches in 32 to 37, the Yahweh or whirlwind speeches in 38 to 41, and then the epilogue in 42. So, it, you know, the, it's a comprehensive treatment of the of the book, but it's also a theological reading of the book with sensitivity to uh, historical, literary, and canonical features in the book. And I would say that that basically describes the course, uh, and that would be uh, an approach I think that's hard to find to Job, just because uh, most of the treatments of Job handle it on a literary level. They handle it maybe on uh, a uh, uh, historical critical level, they handle it on a number of different levels, but uh, there's not much integration of all of those in a, in a basically canonical reading of the book. Many approaches to the book of Job would see the book as constructed to give an answer to why the righteous suffer. Uh, there's other readings. There's also the reading that the book is constructed to demonstrate whether or not uh, there can be such a thing as disinterested piety, serving God simply for God's sake rather than for some hope of gain. Uh, I think uh, I take a different approach to this because I'm worried that uh, those questions, while they are in, in the book and they are part of its message, have a tendency to eclipse uh, the importance of the character of God and what that teaches us about where wisdom is found. Uh, wisdom consists for us, vis-a-vis -vis the character of God as wise and good and all-knowing, it consists in, in learning to trust when we don't understand. And of course, trust is, is based in a character issue. Is God the kind of God that can be trusted? And why can he be trusted? when we don't understand. I like to probe that question in the book. Uh, I don't rule out uh, the fact that why the righteous suffer and uh, serving God for disinterested reasons are part of its message. I just worry that by making those ultimate, the doctrine of God and the character of God, its significance for the book tends to recede into the background and it tends to reshape the kind of questions we think the book is about. When you hear somebody say Job is Christian scripture, uh, it's very easy to assume that we're going to start with the New Testament and read all of its ideas back into what's going on in Job. And that is not what I mean by reading Job as Christian scripture. When I talk about reading Job as Christian scripture, I mean reading Job's witness to Christ as given on the Old Testament's own semantic level, its own uh, historical level, its own original level, its own original sense, if you will. Uh, I do believe that it teaches things about the same Christ who is uh, the Word made flesh in the New Testament, but it teaches those things on its own terms and in its own way, in a way that's not simply replaceable by the New Testament or simply identical with it in terms of the way it, it gets there. So uh, reading Job as Christian scripture means reading Job's witness to the Redeemer, to the uh, Mokiach, that's a Hebrew term for the mediator in Job. Um, it, reading that, uh, what the, the book teaches us about uh, those things on its own level. 
Uh, and only then, after that, moving to the New Testament description and comparing them and seeing how they both, in their own ways, in different ways, speak of the one God uh, revealing him in self in Christ by the Spirit. I build on uh, what are called redemptive historical approaches to reading Job. I, I uh, build on the insights of folks like Meredith Klein and Mark Futado. But I also extend those insights into what I would call more of a canonical reading of the book that uh, opens you up to uh, seeing certain uh, dimensions of the book that maybe the redemptive historical method uh, is open to but doesn't develop as, a, as explicitly as I would in the class. Uh, so that would be a, a, the basic um, what I think I mean by Job as Christian scripture. It's a canonical reading that makes a judicious use of historical information, historical issues, and, and but it also looks at the way the book structures the witness to uh, the mediator, Job's mediator and Job's advocate in heaven, uh, pays particular attention to the way that's done on the book's own terms, rather than just assimilating it with the New Testament.